This episode is sponsored by my brand new Healthy Balance Cooking Club. As a healthy chef, I've been teaching cooking classes in person for a decade, and I am so excited to finally take them online. I'm here to help you make healthy cooking feel fun and simple through restaurant-worthy weeknight dinners, at-home date nights, meal prep made easy, and classes the whole family can get in on. You might have seen my Cook with Chris lives on Instagram. These are just like those, but bigger and better. You'll get the recipes ahead of time so you can grab your ingredients and cook right alongside me, or you can just watch from wherever you're at. You can ask me questions and learn to cook like a pro from the comfort of your own kitchen. You can sign up for classes as they come at HealthyMamaChris.com slash classes, or for a limited time, you can become a founding member of the Healthy Balance Cooking Club to get access to every single cooking class I share, live and recorded, including special meal prep and holiday classes for an entire season, September through May, for over 50% off. Plus, I'll send you some sweet swag to show off and remind you to keep cooking fun even when you have crazy kids running underfoot. Head to HealthyMamaChris.com slash HBCC to become a founding member of the Healthy Balance Cooking Club or head to the link in the show notes. Membership closes on October 1st and won't be available again until next year. So jump in on it, Mama. I can't wait to see you in class. Living a healthy, balanced life is no small feat, especially when you're a mom. With meals to cook, laundry to load, work to do, and humans to raise, it can be easy to feel like we're in an on-again, off-again relationship with healthy living. But it doesn't have to feel this way. I believe living a healthy life has become way too complicated. What we need isn't a new plan or program telling us what to eat or how to live. We need simple, uncomplicated routines and information that's going to help us live our best, most beautiful life without rules and restrictions. Join me, Kristen Dofniak, holistic health coach, certified intuitive eating counselor, and mama of two for weekly conversations on what it means to live a healthy, balanced life, uncomplicate eating, and simplify in every area of mom life. Hey friends, welcome back to a special episode of Healthy Mama Hacks. Today we are doing a Q&A all about meal prep. I asked you guys over on Instagram what your burning meal prep questions were, and I got a handful of awesome questions I'm really excited to answer today. If you haven't been listening to this month's meal prep series, I encourage you to listen to the last four episodes if you were interested in learning how to meal prep in a way that is efficient and create your own convenience for your family. It is one of my favorite things to teach. I created a course on meal prep four years ago, and I have continued to update it in the last four years because it's just, it's something that is so, so helpful, especially in this back to school season in helping us feel a little bit more organized and a little less stressed around cooking. But when I talk about meal prep, I want to remind you, I'm not talking about cooking everything ahead of time at the beginning of the week. That does work for some people, but for a lot of busy mamas, that doesn't work. So it's about finding a meal prep style that works for you. I talk about the three different styles of meal prep in my course, and I talked a little bit about them in the series as well. So in the series, I talked about the four P's of meal prep, prioritizing your meal prep. So that's a great place to start and get a little primer on how I teach meal prep to take the stress out of cooking and getting meals on the table instead of adding more to your plate. We're not about restriction over here, so it's not about meal prepping to eat perfectly. It's about meal prepping so that you eat in a way that feels good and it actually happens in a reasonable amount of time for you and your family family. So today I'm going to answer your meal prep questions. So these might be questions that, you know, some of them were partially answered during the series that I did, or some of them might be something that you are just still stuck on or hung up on. I got some really great questions. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to read the question and I have only glanced at these. So these are mostly off the cuff. So I hope you enjoy this episode. If you like episodes like this, please let me know over on Instagram. I'm at Healthy Mama Chris. If you have questions throughout the month, you are always welcome to send me a DM over at Healthy Mama Chris or at Healthy Balanced Mama Pod. We are going to be doing monthly Q and A's on the Healthy Balanced Mama podcast. So if you guys have questions about anything, not just meal prep, anything related to meal prep, meal planning, intuitive eating, balanced movement, living a balanced life as a mom, 
we've got we've got it all coming up for you. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We would love to hear them. So without further ado, let's jump in. Question number one is a question that I get asked quite a bit when it comes to meal prep, and it was about food safety. So the question says, food safety, if I you if I cook pre-cooked meat and then use it in a recipe later in the week, how long are leftovers okay? Okay, so this is a little bit of a two-part question here. So, I mean, I'm reading it as a two-part question. So let's talk about how long the pre-cooked meat lasts and then how long the meal cooked with the pre-cooked meat last because this is kind of two questions in once or two questions in one rather. So let's first and foremost talk about food safety in general and food safety when it comes to meal prep. I am food safety certified in two countries. So I have a lot of experience with food safety. We learned about food safety in nutrition school as well as in culinary school. It's really, really important. So what is actually most important and I want to kind of drill home is the food safety before you actually store your food. Make sure that you are being safe when you're cooking. A lot of us think we're being safe when we're cooking, but it can be really easy to forget to do things like wash our hands consistently. I think the last year has maybe encouraged us to wash our hands just a little bit more frequently, but make sure you're washing your hands while cooking. Make sure you are cleaning off your cutting boards and your work surface in between switching between different tasks, especially if you're using anything raw. So raw meat, raw seafood, raw eggs, make sure that you are cleaning off your surfaces, using a good cleaner, cleaning them off entirely. So that's number one. Stay safe while you're actually cooking. Wash your hands. Make sure that you are cleaning off anything raw. Be diligent about that. That is going to be the best defense against foodborne illness is making sure that you are being safe while you are actually cooking, that you are um, you have clean surfaces, and that you are cooking your food thoroughly. So I have a whole food chart in Healthy Mama Meal Prep where I share with you exactly how, like the temperatures for different meats. It's important that you're cooking your, your meat and your poultry and your fish at the recommended temperatures. Now, there are exceptions here. There, You can definitely eat fish raw, but you have to be very, very safe about that. So make sure you're getting it from a reputable source and you understand how to serve something like raw fish. Um, So when you are cooking, especially poultry... Um, and pork as well. Make sure that you are you're cooking it to the temperature that is recommended. So you can look up charts online. You know, poultry is 165 degrees. Pork is 145 degrees. There's varying levels for different types of food. So making sure that you're being safe while you're cooking is number one. Number two, when I teach about meal planning and meal prep, and the reason I say meal planning and meal prep, I always recommend to just plan for five days. And this is twofold. This is because life happens and I want you to be flexible with your meal plan and allow yourself flexibility for ordering a pizza, eating leftovers, having an impromptu date night, just actually having some space to be able to mix and match the different meals throughout the week so you don't feel constrained to eating exactly according to plan unless that really works for you. And if it does, then that's awesome. But if you're feeling constrained by your meal plan, it might be because they're just you have too much planned or it's just and it's just not flexible enough for you. So the other reason that I recommend this, especially when it comes to meal prep, is to never prep for more than five days in advance because most cooked vegetables, grains and meats do not last more than five days. Three to five days is the rule for cooked food in general. Um, Most salads and things like that last closer to like three days, but your cooked meats and vegetables, as long as you are eating them, by the way, within the time of like expiration. So if they are expired, I mean, obviously, I would recommend that you not eat something that's expired. But if they're like right about to expire too, or they expire that day, it might not last as long. So if they're well within the expiration date, Three to five days cooked is the general rule. So that being said, if you are going to cook something with pre-cooked meat, then you've already started the countdown. So if you cook if you cook the meat on Sunday, then you want to be make eating the leftovers for that meal by like Thursday. So you definitely don't want to be using that same meat 
on Friday and then eating the leftovers on Saturday. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So you're already starting the countdown for the three to five days for that cooked meat. So typically if I do pre-cook a protein, especially any sort of meat, then I use it in recipes in the first two to three days of the week. So that's really important. So that's kind of twofold there. So three to five days cooked, and then cooking it within that time period, even if you're using it in another dish as well. So I typically recommend prepping for three to five days. You can always do a mini prep in between, but that should take you through most of the week and give you some flexibility at the end of the week, maybe having an easy meal or something like that. Um, A couple other tips when it comes to food safety that are important. Make sure that you are reheating your food fully when you are reheating it. And if you reheat your food, then it's done. So no, no saving that after. And definitely, if you reheat part of it and you don't finish it, do not mix hot with cold. You don't want your food to be in the danger zone. The danger zone is like the temperature Oh gosh, I I can't remember it off the top of my head. It's like somewhere above 41 degrees and below like, well, when you're essentially like boiling it. (laughs) Uh, I don't know the exact um, off the top of my head, but the danger zone is that place where it's like not super hot. It's not super cold. And when it sits there, that's where bacteria grows. So you don't want to be mixing cold food in the fridge with hot food ever ever. Okay. Rule of thumb there. Um, Also, make sure that you're letting your food cool completely before you refrigerate it or you freeze it. So when you're doing your meal prep, make sure that you are letting it cool. You can cool it on the counter, but don't let it sit out more than four hours. That is the rule from the fridge. When you take it out of the fridge, you don't want it to sit out or or you prepare it. You don't want it to sit out more than four hours. Then you start getting into bacteria territory. And a rule of thumb when it comes to food safety that we use all the time in restaurants is when in doubt, throw it out. If it looks funky, if it smells funky, if you're not quite sure, throw it out. I'm not for food waste, you guys. This is why I love talking about meal prep. I want to help you utilize the ingredients that you buy at the store and not waste food, but it is way safer to throw it away if you're not sure than to end up with an icky foodborne illness. So when in doubt, throw it out. If you're getting to day four or five and you're not sure if you're going to use the ingredient, then freeze it. Your freezer is amazing. You're going to want to use it right away when you defrost it, but your freezer is an amazing resource. So definitely use your freezer. I have a whole Healthy Mama Hacks episode on organizing your freezer. I will link that down below. And last but not least, when it comes to food safety, um, the FDA has an app called the Food Keeper app. I believe it's the FDA. CDC? It might be the CDC. Apologies to whatever organization created this. But the Food Keeper app will give you just like general guidelines on how long you can keep different items. It's really handy. So if you're not sure and um, this is something that concerns you, which I mean, honestly, it should concern everyone. (laughs) Food safety is important. You can use the Food Keeper app as well. I'm also going to include within this episode in the show notes down below the guide from my course Healthy Mama Meal Prep. This is one of the new new additions because I've gotten this question so much to Healthy Mama Meal Prep. It's just a one-page guide and it just gives you basically the bullet points that I just shared with you about food safety. So I will link that down below if you want to go ahead and download that. So that was question number one. Question number two. I've tried to prep before, but it never really lasted. I don't even know where to start. Okay, so I'm not quite sure if you mean the prep, like the prepped food didn't last or you tried to prep before and your prep didn't last, didn't last the actual act of prepping. And this actually goes along with the next question. So we're going to get to that in a little bit because it's all about tips for consistency of meal prepping. Um, so... If you don't know where to start when it comes to your meal prep, well, first and foremost, listen to the last four episodes because I did a whole a whole rundown on meal prep. But my first piece of advice and the episode that I would I would actually send you to first is about prioritizing your prep. A lot of people start meal prepping without a plan. So having a plan is important first and foremost. So planning for three to five days. But More than just planning your meals, it's asking yourself the important question of where do you need the most support when it comes to meal prep? What meals are hardest to get on the table? What meals do you end up skipping or what meals do you end up eating foods that don't make you feel good? Not because, you know, you're just, you know, this is what you're craving, but because you just don't have the time, energy, capacity to make something. That's where you want to start. 
If you don't know where to start, if you feel overwhelmed by meal prep, I want you to start small. I want you to start by just prepping one thing this week in an area that's going to help you the most. So what is the busiest time during your week? Is it breakfast or the busiest meal? Is it lunches? Is it dinners? When does it feel the hardest? And start there and just start with one thing and you can build upon that. You will start to gain that motivation to do a little bit more prep and you never have to prep everything ahead of time. I I, I like to reiterate that over and over again because it's about what works for you. You might just end up prepping breakfast at the beginning of each week because that's what works for you and that's awesome that's still meal prep there is no one size fits all when it comes to meal prep and that's why I created the course in the way that I did and why I talk about this in the way that I do because all that's important is that it works for you so where do you need the most support start small start with one item and you can build upon that if you feel like you need more support in other areas you're like okay I've got breakfast down now I'm going to start prepping lunches or vice versa So just start there. Start by prioritizing your prep. Where do you need the most support? And start small. You've got this. You can make a huge difference in your week by just prepping one item at the beginning of the week. You do not need to spend hours in the kitchen in order to prep in a way that works for you. So the second part to this and the next question that I got asked simply said tips for consistency of meal prep. So I'm taking this as consistency for meal prepping on a regular basis. So my best tip for meal prepping on a consistent basis, first of all, give yourself grace. There are going to be weeks where it just doesn't happen and that's okay. And it might be a little bit more of a haphazard week. Those weeks are the weeks where I am reminded how much meal prep helps me, especially in the busier months. So for us, it's the school year, that's school season, which is coming up for us literally next week. My my oldest starts school next week. My youngest already started going uh, three days a week this week. But it's so important that you are leaning in to your season and what is working for you in your season. So when it comes to consistency, yes, consistency is important. It's what's going to make the most difference. But ask yourself first and foremost, what kind of season am I in? Going back to that question, where do you need the most support? And then it's about creating a routine around that. So asking yourself, when do I actually have time to meal prep? And how much time do I actually have? When do I have time to grocery shop? Because you're going to need to do that before you meal prep. And when do I have time to meal plan? You're going to have to do that before you go grocery shopping or else you're going to end up buying a ton of food that might not go together. We don't start with the grocery shopping. We don't start with the meal prep. We start with the planning and then the grocery shopping and then the prep. And again, planning can be very flexible. It can be meal ideas. It can be three days of plans. It can just be planning dinners or it can be planning five meals and planning breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It can be what it's whatever works for you, but start small, just like I mentioned in the last question. And just begin to develop a routine that feels good for you. You don't need to do all of these three things in one day. I do my meal planning on either Fridays or Saturdays, and I do my grocery shopping typically on Saturdays. And that's just what works for me, and I'm able to do that and get my grocery shopping done, and then I do my meal prep on Sundays. A lot of the women that I work with, a lot of the meal prep clients I have, have a hard time doing it all in one day because it is exhausting, and that is oftentimes what keeps them from consistency of meal prep. If it feels exhausting, every single time, you're not going to want to do it. And I want you to do it because it's going to make your week feel so much easier. But if it's something you dread every single week, then it's really important that you take a step back and go, what actually feels good? What time do I actually have? Do I have to do this all in one day? Maybe all in one day does feel good for you. But what does feel good for you? And experiment and see what works. See what feels good. Figure out what time, what time you have, how much time you have and start there. And also just make it fun, okay? Just start small, don't overwhelm yourself, and put on some music, grab a kombucha or a glass of wine, depending on what time of the day it is, but no judgment, mama. It's meal prep. It should be fun. (laughs) Put on a, a podcast. I love listening to a podcast or an audiobook when I do my meal prep, as long as I'm not recording it for Instagram. (laughs) And just make it something that feels like self-care as much as it can. And that's going to help you be more consistent. So create a routine, start small, don't overwhelm yourself and make it fun. And don't be afraid to pivot. Okay. If it's not working, if your routine isn't working, especially if the season changes, what something in your life changes, don't be afraid to pivot just because it was one way once doesn't mean it needs to be like that forever. So, so pivot and change and lean into whatever season you're in and allow it to allow it to work for you there's gonna there's a lot of people on the internet that show you how they meal prep and you don't have to follow any of them not that you don't you can follow them um when it comes to you know instagram facebook whatever but 
You don't have to do what they do if it doesn't work for you. So try it. And if it doesn't, that's okay. Throw it away and try something new. So my next question is a really good one. And and I had to think about this for a couple minutes because this is something that is just sort of become natural to me be, just because of my background as a personal chef. But it's a great, great question. And it is how to cook enough, but not too much. Okay, so my first answer to this is to go back to asking yourself again, what are your needs? Okay, so where do you need the most support and who in your family needs that support? If you are a single person, it's going to be much different than a family of six. How much you make for a single person is going to be different than what you make for a family of six. Or you might make the same amount, but how you're actually going to divide that up throughout the week is going to be much different. So when I make a batch of egg cups for breakfast, for instance, in the morning, typically that's just my husband and myself that eat those. So if I make eight of them, that is only going to last us two days because we each eat two of them at once. Typically, I make more. Typically, I make 12. So let's say that's only three days. That's not lasting us the entire week. So we need to have a backup plan, which we always do um, for a couple of days. But if I'm not making them for myself, my husband just asked for them that week, then that's going to last him the whole week. So he'll be fine with those for the whole week. So asking yourself, what are your needs and who is actually going to eat that food? Um, And what will you reasonably go through? Are you okay eating those egg cups every day for the next three days or the next five days or whatever? Or are you going to want to mix it up? Do you want two different options? And are your your kids going to be bored after two days of those? So what will you reasonably go through? What are your actual needs? Um, And just check recipe serving sizes. These are serving sizes, you guys. They are a suggestion. They are an estimate. Everyone is different. Everyone's body is different. Everyone's kids are different. There are meals where my kids eat it up and I'm like well guess we're not having this for lunch for leftovers tomorrow and there are meals where my three-year-old has like one bite and I'm like oh well I guess that's my lunch tomorrow (laughs) so check serving sizes use these as guidelines and a lot of this honestly 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 you guys is trial and error it's going about how much does my family eat Is this meal going to be like a big soup stew or chili oftentimes is dinner for one night and leftovers for at least my husband and myself, sometimes also my daughter, for the next day. So a lot of this is trial and error. The more you do this, the more you will start to just take note of how long meals last you. Is this big enough that it's actually two meals for you? Um, So a lot of it is just taking note of that, just some trial and error, taking note of what your family's needs are, who is actually going to eat this food, and what will you reasonably go through. I typically err on the side of making slightly too little because it's easy to throw together something at the end of the week than making too much because then you end up with food waste and we don't want food waste and we also don't want to get bored by our meals. I want flexibility when it comes to my meal prep. So cooking enough but not too much. So the other thing is that I tend to prep especially for dinners ingredients more so than I do full meals. So when we're talking about prep specifically, prepping ingredients means that I have the ingredients ready to go even if I change my mind about what I want to have for dinner then we still have ingredients that we can use in a different meal. So that's just something else to think of if you feel like, you know, the meal that you had chosen is either you don't want it or you're like, okay, this is not going to be enough for our family. How can you utilize those ingredients in another meal or add something onto that instead? But remember, a lot of it is trial and error. I wish I had like specific guidelines for you, but everyone is different and serving sizes are an estimate. They're a suggestion. So take a look at them and estimate what that means for your family. For us, at this point in time with an almost eight-year-old, an almost four-year-old, and two adults, a recipe that serves four typically serves us for a dinner, and then there's usually one portion of leftovers, depending on how hungry my kids are and how hungry my husband is. So that's about, I, I about know that for us. If it serves six, definitely leftovers for the next day. And that's just us in our season. As the kids get bigger and they get hungrier, it might change, right? So a lot of this is trial and error, but um, definitely just take note of that and start to recognize kind of what what works for your family. So I know that that wasn't, I know that wasn't like the best answer ever, but hopefully, hopefully it was encouraging and helpful that we're, we're all kind of trying to figure that out. 
So the last question I got, I actually have an entire video on in my meal prep course. So if you are in the course, then you can go and watch that video. I'm going to give you the brief synopsis of this because I think the video is like 15 minutes long. I talked a lot because I love talking about kitchen tools. So what are your meal prep essential tools? All right, let's go. We're not going to spend 15 minutes on this. I'm going to tell you this first and foremost. I don't think you need a lot of fancy tools to be a good cook. I don't think you need a lot of fancy tools to meal prep in a way that is efficient. There are tools that can help you be more efficient. So here are the essentials. You need a sink, a stove and or an oven. You need a refrigerator. Okay. That's it. No, I'm just kidding. You need a few more things than that. But really, you don't need a ton. I have a whole episode on my favorite kitchen tools. I will link that down below as well. You need a good knife. You need a chef's knife that is big enough for the task at hand and sharp enough. The sharper the knife, the less likely you are to hurt yourself. So make sure your knife is sharp. You need a cutting board that is secure. You need to secure your cutting board on your chopping surface so if this is like this can be a wet paper towel or a a wet cloth this is one of the first things they teach us in culinary school it's very important that you have a sturdy surface or it can be a cutting board that has grips on it so a knife and a cutting board is going to be most important pots and pans i typically recommend a couple of saute pans in varying sizes i do like one of them to be cast iron um so something smaller something larger and typically a smaller pot like a sauce pot and a larger pot that's big enough for a soup or a stew or pasta and that's basically what you need in terms of pots and pans you could you know a dutch oven is really helpful because a dutch oven and a cast iron pan both of them go in the oven as well so if you make something on the stove and you want to pop it in the oven like a frittata then those are really helpful having a couple of casserole dishes in varying sizes i typically recommend an 8 by 8 inch and a 9 by 13 can be really helpful for meal prep, especially a muffin tin is not an essential, but definitely helpful, especially if you're going to make muffins, if you're going to make meatloaf muffins, or if you're going to make egg muffins. I like the silicone muffin cups for those, and you can get those on Amazon for like 10 bucks, like really, really inexpensive. And those are really helpful. Um, A couple sheet pans, I recommend two or three sheet pans. These are also inexpensive. You can get them at Target. And those are, and you definitely want some parchment paper or silpat mats as well, which are kind of like silicone parchment paper. Just to make it nonstick and to make cleanup easier. So you definitely want some sheet pans. I always recommend a microplane because it's going to make grating garlic and ginger and any sort of zest a lot easier. So I love that. A couple things that are not essentials, but I find them essential for meal prep are a rice cooker because it cooks any type of grains really easily. And my rice cooker also comes with a steamer top. So if you want to steam anything, you can steam it on top of the rice cooker in the Instant Pot. I love the Instant Pot, you guys. I know everyone's into the air fryer these days, and I still don't have one, and I'm not mad yet. I do kind of want one because I just, I do. But the Instant Pot, you can do hard-cooked eggs, you can do grains, you can do beans, you can do shredded chicken, you can do soups, stews, chilies. Everything takes less time. It's fantastic. So not an essential, but definitely helpful. And of course, you need containers. You need several containers. So some of my favorites are mason jars in varying sizes. I like the little four ounce ones, the medium size eight ounce, and the 16 ounce, and then the really big like 32 ounce. And I tend to like the wider mouth ones for meal prep, especially if you're going to freeze something. Yes, you can freeze in mason jars. You just need a little bit of room at the top. Uh, But by a little bit, I mean, you need like two inches of room at the top because you don't want your glass to crack. And mason jars are just so so great for any sort of sauces or salad dressings soups stews you can do chia puddings in there overnight oats yogurt jars so so great i also love weck jars as well they're a little bit more expensive but they're airtight so they seal really well and i also love those for any of those breakfast items i just mentioned those are really great as well um and they're great for like individual size portions especially if you're going to take it with you too they're a nice size. I like these containers. I think the company is called Prep Natural and they're on Amazon and they come in packs of like four or five and they're divided glass containers. I like glass because you can put hot food in it and you're not worried about heating up plastic. And so those are really great. And Pyrex is also a good company as well. But I like the Prep Naturals because they seal, they're airtight and they kind of, they snap. Um, Snapware is another brand too. I don't know if Snapware is owned by Pyrex, is it? I'm not sure, Um, but you can get them at Target as well, and they snap, and they're airtight, and everything just lasts longer when it's a little bit more airtight, so 
Those are my recommendations. You don't need a ton of tools to meal prep, but having some that just makes things a little bit easier. So one of the principles I talk about when it comes to meal prep is utilizing all of the available surfaces and tools that you have. So it's important to make sure that you are able, that you are utilizing what you can. So you're not just doing one thing at a time. If you can multitask, then multitask. This isn't going to come at the beginning of your meal prep, but once you start prepping, I always recommend starting with the item that cooks the longest first. And then once you do that, you can prep the other items. So this could be something that's in the Instant Pot or in the oven and let that cook and then you can utilize something else. So if you're utilizing your oven, you might as well use both of your oven racks. If you've got four burners on your stove, some people have five or six. You can use all of those burners as long as you are setting timers and paying attention to it. Once you get more well-versed at meal prep and it becomes something that becomes easier, then you can utilize all of the surfaces you have. So just having some tools can be really helpful for that. If you don't have a lot of space, something like the Instant Pot is really, really helpful to give you kind of a, a little bit of extra space as well. So those are the questions that I got on meal prep. We're just under 30 minutes. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. I love talking about meal prep. As you know, I have my Healthy Mama meal prep course. We just did a meal prep class this past week, um, but I'll be doing another one probably late fall. So look out for that. Um, I do hour-long meal prep classes. So make sure you're on my email list if you're not or in the Healthy Balance Mama Facebook group. Definitely join us in the Facebook group. We're doing some fun stuff over there, uh, especially coming up in the fall. We're going to do book club again in the fall. So I would love to have you over there. Thank you so much for listening, friends. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. If you have any more meal prep questions, do not hesitate to reach out over on Instagram and I will catch you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Healthy Balance Mama podcast. If you loved it, would you take a screenshot and share it with a friend over on Instagram and tag me in it? It helps me so much to know what you love and are taking away from each episode. If you really loved it, would you hop over to iTunes and give me a star rating and review? Every rating and review helps this podcast be seen and heard by more women who need to hear the message of balance and wellness without deprivation. It's the best free gift you could give me. And as a reminder, the information and opinions on this podcast are meant for education and inspiration only and are not to be taken as medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Please consult with a trusted practitioner before making any changes. Have a beautiful day, friend, and I'll see you in the next episode.